Well, good evening, everyone. It's so good to see all of you, and thank you for joining us. Uh, it's a pleasure to work for you and with you. My name is Steve Carver. I am in Dunn at my home office and studio. This is my presentation number 983 on September 14th, 2022. Thank you for joining me on my journey and letting me be a part of yours. I am not a lawyer, and I am not a CPA or a tax advisor. Just a fellow that's been in business a long time, offering free advice and trying to help folks like yourself avoid pitfalls and unexpected expenses and trying to share with you maybe what I've learned over 63 years. First piece of advice is always get a second opinion. Find someone you can trust and talk to them before you make major decisions affecting the, uh, your well-being and security of yourself and, of course, your, your business. We're sponsored tonight by the James Front uh, Community College's Small Business Center. Mr. John Hardison is the director. There's his phone number and email address. And if you're in the uh, uh, the Warsaw area, the Dublin County area, uh, make an appointment with John. His office is in Warsaw. Let him help you with your business. It's just like having a free employee. It won't cost you a penny, and you'll get lots and lots of good help. And we certainly look forward to, to doing that. Uh, he's, uh, his office is out on Penny Branch Road, just on the outskirts of Warsaw. I've been in business now for uh, 63 years, uh, doing lots and lots of different things. But right now my focus this week has been studying about you, you folks that have been joining us in the uh, uh, webinars and trying to learn all I can about you so that we can go steady again for a, a five more straight Wednesdays and then five Tuesdays. <clears throat> Next week we'll be talking about marketing, and week four, which I misspelled the word four, I see there, how to find customers and so forth. We've got a busy fall ahead of us, so uh, let's get started. No doubt about it, a lot to do. Something special, though, that uh, next Monday night, if you are in the Kenansville area, or you want to come over to the college, uh, I'll be presenting a, a webinar or a seminar there at live uh, uh, at the college in the Williams Building, room 109. The Williams Building is right out by the highway, and uh, at 6 o'clock, uh, <clears throat> the uh, seminar is going to be about starting a salon or a barber shop or a career in that, so if you have an interest in that topic, please come on out and join a live webinar. This is the first one that they've done over there in several years, and I'm just really excited about giving it a try. Hopefully we'll have some folks to show up for it. Uh, but whether you're interested in that topic or not, uh, and you want to talk to me or to talk with John about your business or just meet uh, and uh, just for the fun of uh, getting to know each other, we'd love to have you come over. Uh, just come on about uh, 5.30 and we'll meet and, and go from there. So that's next Wednesday night in person in Kenansville. And now next Tuesday night, we're going to have kind of a short one-hour presentation about bookkeeping, uh, the, the basics of bookkeeping, what, uh, what, uh, what all that I can tell you in a one-hour period to help you uh, give you some ideas about what you may be headed for, I'll be trying to do that. Let me say hello to Shirley. Glad to have you on board. I'm muting microphones. If your mic isn't muted, please go ahead and do it because we are picking up some uh, some background noise. Uh, at the end of the program, we'll turn them back on. So next Tuesday night, uh, we have a special. If you want, uh, you'll join it just like you joined tonight if you want to. So uh, I've emailed to you. If you if I have your email address, I've already emailed to you study guides for tonight's lesson. Uh, which includes number nine, 983, which is talking about all that we'll have on the slides, uh, plus the drill skills, uh, more information, the same information on helping you start your uh, mission, vision, and promise statements, and a sample business planner. So you got some, some uh, stuff to do. Now, the highlight of tonight, actually, we're going to start it right out because I've done my homework and did all the good. I want to introduce you to some folks for the purpose of energizing you to let you know that what we're doing here can really help you get your business started. And you've got a lot of proof and a lot of people that have, are, are active in this or coming to it. 
Over in the facing area, we got Angela, who comes with us on a regular basis. She's she is one of our master associates, and that means that she's attended these classes at least three times, at least three times. And sometimes it takes you two or three years to get your business started, <clears throat> and it's perfectly good for you to come back and learn these lessons until you get it down pat. And then we've got Sarita Sapson over in Clinton, who's starting her uh, 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 her own business. Uh, really talented with design work and many other things. And what we're going to be talking about starting next week is I'm going to encourage each one of y'all to to start doing your own videos because when we have these YouTube videos, we're able to post them on Facebook and, and other places to help you start actually making some money. And nothing is, is, uh, is more powerful than a video. So let's see what Sarita has done for us. Hi, my name is Sarita Samson, and I'm the owner of Taylor's Designs. I'm here to tell you about my business. I do virtual assistants. I do business cards, logos, and I also do ph photography. I'm a graphic design student, and I'm here to help you with your needs. Give me a call at 910-379-9680. Thank you. Hi. That's fantastic, uh, uh, Sarita. She she did that at home, uh, uh, and when you do, if you'll give us a raw video, uh, we've got people ready, willing, and able to help you dress it up and turn it into an actual commercial and show you what all we can do with them. I'll show you a few more. But we're really proud for last week uh, with Wilmington, uh, James Sprunt, and with Clinton, we've got 46 of you fine folks that are interested in moving forward. And I'm just going to mention uh, some names here because think about this. You're starting a business, and you want people to, to, to know you're here and to recognize you and to contact you and start doing some business. Well, the more information that you put out for the world to see, the better chance they're going to have to find you. So let's just find, see that people pay attention. I pay attention. We've got Heather with her. Candle work. Uh, Madison is starting a event planning business. Nico's starting her uh, her business, and Torrance is right on the way. Amy's over in Brunswick County area with a bakery, and Cheryl's coming along. Uh, Lakeisha, Carol, Jade, Sam, uh, Amy, Janot, and Tucker, all very uh, uh, ready to go to work. But you see, I don't have much information here. So if you're in business, Jade and Sam, how in the world are people going to be able to find you to do business with you if you don't have the information out there? Catherine and Katrina, Crystal, there's Crystal, and Oliver, all we know a little bit about what you're up to, but let's let the world uh, know more so they can do business with you. Julia and Amelia and uh, Denisha, uh, uh, Sebastian, brother, Lakita, Look at all these folks that are working with us. These are entrepreneurs just like you and just like the ones I'll talk about in a little bit. You can move your business forward. There's Patrice and Marilyn and Devin and Darlene's with us tonight. See, Darlene, I've, I've, I've tried to find you on the Internet, tried to find you on Facebook. And if y'all have, uh, if, you, if you folks have Facebook pages, you know, sometimes you may have a name that there's a hundred other people that have the same name. I do my best to find you, but sometimes I know I'm lost in the shuffle. But y'all email to me what your Facebook uh, link is or even put it on chat if you want other people to friend you because we're going to use that as a way to get your business up and running. Uh, Jennifer was also with us tonight. Uh, Sean and Crystal again. Charmin. Randa. I got that Randa uh, uh, right there. And Tierra. Uh, Kelly's been with us, but she, she's not with us tonight. She'll be, <clears throat> she'll be back with us tomorrow night, I'm sure. Uh, Jeremy and Sheila, April and Natisha. So, but here's some now that after last week started sharing information and showing me that they're serious about moving forward with their business. So I'm pr so proud of Felicia over in Albemarle. Sent me a great photograph. Felicia's going to have a... a uh, a business to help folks with their bookkeeping. And she's already named her business, got her LLC, and the name of her business is going to be Perfect Records Bookkeeping Solutions. 
So we know that much, but now let me show you what a little bit of extra work can do. She's went ahead and got her logo. Have you thought about maybe the logo for your business? Isn't that, isn't that neat? And she's also got a signboard up on her Facebook page, Perfect Records Bookkeeping Solutions. Felicia, I guess an A+. Plus. I'm so proud of you for doing that. And Beth is with us tonight. I don't know if uh, on her device that she is uh, she's watching it. She's with her kids tonight. But Beth is there in Dublin County as well, close by. I hope to, to meet her soon. Uh, she is a registered nurse and a health coach operating under the business name Honey Bee Health Coach. So I'm really proud of Beth and looking forward to meeting her and watching her business grow. And she's got a great logo that's posted. In, doesn't that look good? Honey bees. I like the bees. And she's also growing some uh, some uh, some bees now, learning that task. So maybe at some point she'll have some uh, some honey to sell to all of us. But, uh, Beth is very skilled, got a, a very winning personality, which comes across in videos. Let me show you a little bit of it by Beth's video, and we'll ask her to do some that's made primarily just for intros, but this is one that she's uh, sharing with the world today, so I'm happy to share some of it with you just to give you a feel for how your personality uh, and your ability to make a customer feel comfortable with you. Turn your microphones up because this volume isn't very loud, and I want you to be able to hear it if you can. Hello, and welcome back to the Honey Bee Health Coach. I am Beth. I just wanted to take a few minutes today and talk about why me, why pre-diabetes. So I'm an RN. I have worked in the health and wellness industry forever. As a teenager, I was a fitness instructor, and I worked in a gym helping with personal training sessions and stuff like that. Those certifications have long expired. More recently, I have been working as a health coach, and I have I am a certified nutrition coach. And I so you can see there. Uh, you want your videos to, to be loud and clear, but uh, we use that as an example of, of how uh, best winning personality and great smile can put a customer at ease and, and help someone feel good about making an appointment with you. We've also got Katrina uh, Bethea. Uh, she's uh, young, just out of school, but she's already out there on Facebook uh, starting her own business, The Perfect Touch, Apparel, and More. So proud of her and looking forward to learning more about her business as well. Lots and lots going on. So kind of pay attention real close right now and, and tune into this because small business, it's not, it's not a thing for the faint at heart. We don't need to be brave and patient uh, to, and, and, and to see it and overcome. And I want to share with you about a good friend and one of my clients uh, from uh, four years ago uh, Joy Dotson, uh, here close to Dunn in Sampson County. Joy and her husband, uh, James, uh, came to our, our classes. We did some one-on-one -on -one counseling. And I want to tell you, they really worked. He worked as hard as she did uh, learning the skills and helping her because it takes a lot of work. Uh, they memorized the 30 drill skills, memorized them. And it was, they could see the value of it and went ahead and started memorizing and so proud of them for doing that. They put together their business plan and their marketing plan, and we uh, kept adjusting it till they, as they move forward. They got a, a Google My Business page and, and started uh, using that. And as soon as it went up, the first day their Google My Business page went up, they started getting business coming in. So I know it works for them. I know it'll work for you, and it works for me as well, too. Very active on Facebook. That's their primary place through social media. Uh, to, to generate business on Facebook. They've traveled the countryside with samples, and they know how to create, they know how to create and create raving fan customers. And that is, that is a goal that we all want to have if we don't stay in business, raving fan customers. I also want to mention that uh, Joy has uh, really worked good with her photographer, photography, her images. I mean, which looks better? Uh, Joy or the dessert, I think they look equally as good and inviting. Uh, working with your videos and those presentations to win your customers is so important, 
and I want to encourage you to do it, and we'll work with you. She came up with a great name for her company, which is Joy, her first name, by the pound, because she primarily makes pound cakes. Isn't that cool? So it's Joy by the pound. Now, here's the challenge. Please write down on your pad now. I know you got your pads out here tonight. Write down on your pad, Joy by the Pound, and I want you to find her on Facebook, Joy by the Pound. This is her, her uh, Google My Business account here, which really brings in a lot of business for her. Joy went on and started making moves. Uh, she took her, her kitchen at her home and now has it certified as a, uh, as a commercial kitchen. Uh, she had to make some investments to get volume. If you're going to cook a lot of stuff and you want to make a lot of money, you need to have enough oven space to make things happen. So she put in the ovens to make it happen. Now she's able to go to special events and put a whole table of, of materials out. It might, might have taken her a week to, to cook all this, but it's important that to, to have some big tickets, deposits, you have to have some volumes. So she has done that. She's got enough capacity now to to uh, to do the catering at, at uh, weddings and other special events or places, or meetings where people want uh, desserts or stuff to go with their coffee. Uh, lots and lots of different recipes and items that she can offer. At Christmas time, she has the ability now to set up a, a, a sales at different uh, Christmas uh, uh, corners where people are putting on special events. Uh, to end up really selling a lot of product, but mainly really making a lot of people happy and creating a lot of raving fan customers. Every time I say raving fan customer, I want you to hear me say repeat business year after year. Repeat business year after year. We want those raving fan customers. And let me tell you, in week three and four, I'm going to promise you right now, in week three and four, next week and the week after, I'm going to teach you how to create raving fan customers. And there's Joy again inviting you to come on, let's do some business. Uh, just great to do it. So please find her on Facebook. Yeah, give her some business, by golly. I don't mind saying we ought to we ought to buy a pound cake from Joy. I've bought several from her in the past, and they're wonderful. But the main reason I want you on her Facebook pages is, is to see how someone just like you can put a can go from zero to wide open in just a couple of years one step at a time and without ever spending any big bucks on marketing yeah she's made some investments in her kitchen no doubt but it's still right there at her home and I'm so proud of joy for the progress she's made and I want to set her up as an example for you as well so the question is my friends Jen and Patrice and Jennifer and Amelia, are you making your videos? Beth, are you going to make some more videos that will really get people ready to call you right now? I'll help you do it, and we'll go through the fine points of it. We're going to start on it tonight and look forward to moving forward. Tiny tips of wisdom. Let's get ready. and don't go in a hurry. Plan for the unexpected. Build a team that you can trust of of advisors and customers and providers, uh, suppliers, put people around you that you can trust so you feel comfortable in your business. Sometimes things are going to go wrong. I'll guarantee you, if you do enough, you'll make some mistakes. Or if you're out there enough, some, sometimes you're not going to be lucky all the time. Things can go wrong, no doubt about it. But my job is to be assertive and to help motivate you and, make, and, and to see that you want to move forward. So forgive me sometimes if it seems like that I'm stepping on your toes. I don't mean to be. What I do mean to be doing is to help, help encouraging you to move forward. Your job is to find the endurance to stay with it, to stay in the game, and, and keep focusing on the finish line. Now, where is the finish line that we're thinking about? It's the next step that you want to get to. I'm not going to ask you to run a marathon but I do want you to sprint with me. So for me to help you, you need to exchange emails with me. So this is where I'll say, if you just want to ride along in these webinars and get your attendance certificate that you've, com that you've completed the course, that's fine. We're glad to have you on the ride, and we'll enjoy your company. 
But if you're serious about moving your business forward, be ready to start sending me email on a regular basis. All those folks that you saw that have moved forward have been sending email back and forth and taking steps and doing their homework. So send me some information. Uh, let me keep up with what you're up to and, and what your next steps are. There will be a lot of homework for we ask you to do. I need to know now any website links, Facebook links. Be ready to start sending me uh, pictures and products. Uh, uh, we'll show you how to get your Google My Business account and get started on the YouTube videos. All these are critical ingredients to getting your, your business started. But nothing is more important than you learning the drill skills. Now, last week we talked about uh, in, in week one, we talked about uh, eight of the drill skills. I'm not going to go over them because you've got a handout every week that you can rehearse at home. But the last two we need to talk about. By the way, by the way, by the way, that is your ticket to upsells and to stacking profits. Because if you've got multiple profit centers, you're always able to say, and by the way, I have this, and by the way, I have that. And also, how do we catch fish, remember? Keep fresh bait in the water. How do you catch customers? We keep sending out constant promotions. If you notice, I'll send you a promotion to try to get you hooked and try to get you coming back. That's what I want you to be doing with your customers as well. Now, new, new uh, drill skills. What is the best way to find customers? Crystal, what's the best way to find customers? The answer is... Help them find you. Help them find you. That's the way that we that we uh, the best way to find customers. And in week four, week after next, our whole program will be focusing on finding customers. Let's remember that our business can't be all things to all people, but it must be everything to some people. It must be everything to some people, and those some people will become our raving fan customers. Those some people will become our target groups that we're going to aim our marketing at. I don't want you to pay off long-term debt with short-term cash flow. Cash flow is always going to be important. And sometimes when businesses first get started and you have a money coming in, the, the uh, entrepreneurs are seem like they just can't wait to pay off that debt. It's more important that you pay the debt off as you had planned to in the business plan and you start putting some money aside. I want you to start building the nest egg because you're going to need it someday because sometimes things go wrong. Next week and the week after is all about marketing and advertising. What is the difference in the two words? Darlene, what's the difference in marketing and advertising? Beth, do you know? Well, we kind of use the two words all the time as if they mean the same thing, and that's okay, but in our classes for the next uh, few weeks, I want us to think about marketing. Marketing is the big picture. That's everything that we're doing. Advertising is what we're doing on a specific product for an advertising campaign. It's short term. So always marketing is going to be the big pie and advertising will be a small portion of that pie. That's important that we think about when we look at our budgets and how we're going to spend money and direct our activities. So marketing, long term, big picture. Advertising, short term, specific goals. Who's the toughest meanest, strongest competitor that we're up against today? The answer is, is distractions in our own life. The distractions are going to keep us from doing things on the time frame that we might like to do it. And we all have distractions, and sometimes we're not going to be able to get rid of them. We love some distractions we love, like our children, or maybe you're a caretaker for someone or you were already working three jobs and you want, you're just trying to do more. There's some things you just can't do much about. I know that. So understand that when I'm challenging you and I'm saying so much, you ought to do this and you got to do that and such as that. Remember what I said last week. It's all got to fit into your time frame at your pace. To have endurance, you got to pace yourself. So 
let's deal with setting uh, our priorities so that we can fight distractions. That's the way you do it. You, you set the priorities. You need to be able to define fair market value. So I'm going to take just a second. I'm going to ask you to read this slide so that you start understanding and trying to memorize what is fair market value because it is a, it's a tenant principle that we need to know as an entrepreneur. Fair market value is the price in terms of money that property will bring if it's exposed on the open market to a willing seller and a willing buyer. That is, neither one of them are under no pressure. Neither are under any pressure, and both of them understand and know all about the market. That's exactly right. So when two people that are under no pressure agree on the price of something, and they're experts in their field, then that's what fair market value is. Who in today's world, whose job is it to tell us fair market value all the time? the person that calls himself an appraiser, an appraiser, a certified appraiser especially. And that's a good job to do. I'm a certified appraiser. If you have an interest in knowing more about it, I'll try to help you. Now, leading from tonight into next week and week four, the L and the H. What is L and H advertising? Well, smile with me here because I don't tell you right now, I want each and every one of you to be a real good hooker. Yep, I don't encourage you to become a professional hooker tonight, <laughs> but the kind of hooker I want you to be is one that knows how to do a good ad and puts hooks in your advertising. Because the look and the hook, the L and the H, your ads need to look good enough that people will take time to read them. No junk. And you need to have a hook in there that is a call to action that gets them to call you right now you want words and things in your ads to get people excited so they go ahead and contact you now. And when you have that, guess what you can do? You'll be able to uh, uh, account, make your ads account for themselves and determine if they're being successful or not. If we've got a good look and hook program going with our marketing program, you will not waste much money. And it is so easy to waste marketing money. So what is the L and the H? It's the look and the hook. Rhonda, what is the L and the H? The look and the hook. Homework assignments, here it comes. And, and I appreciate y'all being back with us tonight because it's showing that you're, that you're going to hang with us. Nail down those 40 drill skills. Think about in your business how you would apply them. And one of the ways to get extra credits and an extra, extra mile award at the end of the uh, course is for you to take each drill skill and paraphrase it in your own words and send it to me. Use your smartphone this week to make a 20-second introductory uh, uh, video of yourself. Convert it to YouTube and send it to me. If you don't know how to convert it to YouTube, drop me an email and I'll send you information about that. List five marketable profit centers that you're going to have in your business. Five marketable profit centers. There needs to be at least one of the three different types, but I want you to have five profit centers. You'll see tonight, as we start doing our business plan, how important that is. Now, let's move into business plans. In your handout and on the screen, we're going to talk about 10 things tonight. The 10 things I want, to, I want you to leave this webinar <clears throat> knowing or knowing how to find it. What is a business plan? Why well, have it? What is this planner that we've been talking about? That timeline of goals and, and milepost. What is a business model and how are you going to use it to show your income and your expenses. How are we going to connect these models to make a business plan? Yeah, I want you to know, but I don't want you to spend a lot of time or worry about it. I want you to know that a structured business plan, like they teach in college, 
or if you're going to start a big multinational company or a million dollar business, there is such a thing as a structured business plan, and I owe it to you to at least let you know about it. I want you to know about business ownership in stocks, startup money, but the meat of this thing is you're going to need self-confidence. Just like Joey and James, they studied, they learned, they did those uh, uh, drill skills, and she's got enough self-confidence now to, 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 to sell the world pound cake. And then we don't need to believe and trust in yourself. So why have a business plan? Why have a business plan? What's left? We want to know what's left after we subtract our expenses from our projected income. Do you know what your expenses are? No. Nah. Do you know how much money you're going to bring in? Nope. We have to guess at it. So that's why sometimes you have to be in business a year or two before you can have a meaningful business plan. I know that. But I'm also going to tell you some other things that you can do that are very, very real. But if you don't have a business where you don't have to borrow money, then you don't have to show the investors why they should loan you money. If you don't have a business that's going, that's going, you don't take a lot of risk in, that business plan is going to help you avoid a lot of pitfalls. And it's just going to be a document that's going to serve as your mouth to move forward, your math to move, map to move forward. Black ink, money coming in. Black ink, money coming in. Red ink, money going out. Which do you want more of? We want more black ink than we've got red ink. And the black ink and the red ink is how on our business plans we represent what our estimates are. And we're interested in what's left. I don't simplify this thing right down to one page to begin with. Tonight, if you just get one page started, you will be very, very successful in going to the next step because it's all about naming the next steps. And then after we get that page done, then I'm going to ask you to start doing one page at a time outlining your business models so we can put them together in a business plan. So take a look and look at this. This is a one page. Of course, you can make it as many pages as you want, but I've got it here on one page. I'm thinking that we can use as a guy that you want to get your business up and running within six months. You want to have a, a, a credible business that's up and running in six months. And that's about as fast as you can do it unless you've already done a lot of major steps already. And it, while it might take six months, I've seen some of you guys, some of your, your, your fellow entrepreneurs and associates, take six years because of other distractions or things that were, they just, they just had to do it at their pace to get there. But stay with it. That's what we're going to do. So this planner is talking about what are we going to do in the next six months. Uh, so I have looked at this. And you know I updated this on a, on another slide, so I don't know why we're starting at May 15th here. This ought to be starting at October 15th. So I think in your handout it probably says October 15th. So uh, on October 15th, uh, 30 days from now, I'd like for you to have a list of your products and services. I'd like for you to have a list of the skills that you know you're weak at. Maybe it's forecasting or estimating or negotiating or, or bookkeeping. Whatever the skills are that you know you're weak at, make a list of those because we'll be able to help you start enhancing those skills. And I'd like to have a list of those products and services with a menu of what you think the prices are going to be. Because pricing is all about being able to market this thing. So that's your first homework assignment for the next 30 days. Show me a list of your products and services, a list of the skills that maybe you're strong at and not strong at, and what do you think your pricing is going to be. And then next, we're going to look at the next 30 days after that because then we're going to target our customer groups. And in week four and five, I'll, well, week three and four, we'll talk about how to do that. Uh, if you're going to have a location like a business, bricks-and-mortar business somewhere else, 
Let's think about that. It's time for you to be searching for that. And let's talk about maybe what your startup costs are going to be in your business. Start making a list of the things that you're going to do. Now, maybe you don't know the cost yet. But if you'll list down the type of business that you're at and start making a list of what you think you're going to do and share that with me or and or with John, we'll be able to help you fill in the blanks because with all the businesses I've helped start it through the years and John as well, we've got a lot of information we can share with you that will be quite helpful for you. And then the next 30 days we're going to be talking about, let's get in our banking squared away. Let's get our... Let's see if we don't need that EIE, EIN number, some insurance, some banking. Uh, let's kind of get our our funding uh, ready to go and uh, uh, pick out a bank, maybe get a, a checking account for our business. Insurance, let's talk about what's going to be needed. Maybe talk to some insurance people. And it's time now, as we'll start next week, putting together a structured and the key word here is structured marketing plan. You may not be able to, and I might not be able to help you get a structured business plan now, but we can do a structured marketing plan. So let's also look for the products that we need to ha start buying that we're going to resell if that's what you're doing. In other words, you can't sell out of an empty basket, so where are you going to get the stuff to buy it from? Who are you going to be working with? The next, the next month, let's actually put some marketing in place. Prepare our location, get our furniture and fixtures, make sure we're meeting the codes in our building, if we've got the license we need, and we've got all the tax numbers lined up. One month before we're ready to start selling, time to bring merchandise in, time to get it on display, Time to start training some staff on what they need to do. You don't want to have a, a business that's opened up with staff that hasn't been trained. Why? Because your new customers are going to come in, and if the staff don't know what they're doing, they're going to make a lot of mistakes and make a lot of people mad or disappointed that are not going to come back to see you. Your whole goal is to have raving fan customers, right? So you before you open up and introduce the public to you and your staff and your products, let's make sure we've done some training. We can help you a lot with that, with merchandising and pricing and such as that. Now, you know what? Don't open up until you have had a soft opening. Try everything out. Make sure it works. Then you can have your grand opening where you put, invest some money and time and energy to get a lot of people coming in to have some excitement about your business getting ready to open and go for it so that on day one you've got a good chance of creating some decent cash flow. I'm not saying you don't create enough cash flow to pay all your bills, but at least get the ball rolling. That is a six-month planner, and by golly, you need one. Let me tell you, I've been in business now for 63 years, and I need a six-month planner all the time. You learn after you've been in business a long time, you've always got to forecast what your next needs are going to be, and automatically it starts becoming natural to you. You'll always be doing not only a six-month planner, but usually about a one-year planner. Hence, that's a major part of your business plan. But sometimes it takes a little experience to stretch it out that far. So that's that one-page planner, guys. Please take it serious and apply it to your situation. <clears throat> Part two, we're going to talk about business models, and a business model is a, is a uh, summary of what each one of your profit centers are going to do for you. H how many are you going to sell? What is the price of them? How much is it going to cost you? What is each of your uh, uh, business models? that you're going to do for each one of your profit centers, how much money is it going to generate for your business? Yeah, we could say we just don't look at the big picture and after six months see how much money has come in and then we'll see how much we spent and we'll know if we're profitable or not. Not 
why well, take that chance? Because at the end of six months, you may have lost so much money, you can't believe it. It happens all the time. What's better is let's forecast right now what the possibilities are and cut our risk down, cut our risk by 90% by doing business models. So you don't take each one of those marketable profit centers and, and do a page just like it's on the slide here. It'll be a page right by itself where we're going to be talking about what the product is, how much it's going to generate for us, what the costs are, our estimated number of sales for the total uh, uh, revenues it's going to bring in. And I suggest you look at six months. If you're selling products, I suggest we look at six months. Right on that same page, we're going to estimate what our cost of each one of them is, times how many we're going to sell to come up with how much it's going to cost us to sell that number of products. You see, sometimes we could have a really good product, but if the price is way down low, like in the pennies or one or two or three or four or five dollars, you may be making a lot of money on it. But if you're only making one, two, three, four or five dollars per sale, that means you've got to sell hundreds or thousands to end up with enough money to justify running a business. That's why we need to do this. So let's take it to the next step. This is the blank piece of paper. In other words, if you've got five profit centers right now, I could tell you to make five blanks of paper just like this, and we'll start filling them in. Now, let me say to you that this is, this is exactly what I do and other business people do that have been in business for 50, 60 years. If we're thinking about bringing a new product on board, start selling or doing something different, it always starts out this way. So even if you've got an established business and you want to expand it, you'd use the same process to move your business forward. So we're going to, on that same piece of paper on the bottom part of it, we're going to estimate the, the revenues, we're going to subtract the expenses, and look at there, there's what's left. What's left, we're going to talk about a lot. What's left at the end of the day. But what do we call this number, what's left? Is, is it uh, revenue, profit, margin, deposits, earnings? Well, in different situations, it might be any of one of those. But for us, in this situation, for the next month or two, we're going to call it margin. That is the margin, not profit, because we don't know what the profit our business is yet. But we do know what the profit margin is on this particular uh, uh, profit center. So now let's put an example in it. Let's say, congratulations, you're going to be a used car dealer, a, a, a pre-owned automobile dealer. Very it used to be something people would kind of laugh and smoke on, but now it is a great business to be in, and there's lots of them around. And you know through the pandemic, Used car dealers have done quite well. So where do you find used cars? You go to the sales. There's auction sales all over the place. Almost every day you could drive less than 100 miles and go buy used cars at an auction if you're a dealer, if you're a dealer, uh, just like these folks are doing right here. In the screen, these people here, uh, where the cursor is moving back and forth, those folks are the people that are buying these folks up here are the people that are selling, and they're having an auction. These cars roll through right on past the buyers, and as they roll by, uh, they're sold to individual buyers who are bidding on them. That's where used car dealers get their cars to buy from, and also from trade-ins from customers. So they buy them, then they take them back to their hometown. You carry it back to your lot, put some tags on it, do some marketing, do some advertising, and you sell it back at your lot. So let's take it one type of used car and, and do a profit center uh, model on them. Let's say that, and, and I'll mention to you, the first thing we're going to look at are cars that sell for $6,000 or very close to it. This, this car might be on the lot at $69.95. It might be on the lot at $71.50. But the dealer knows that he's going to be okay if he sells it for $6,000. That is the type profit center this is. Now, a used car dealer can probably sell 15 of these cars a month 
easy if they've got a good business going on, fifteen six thousand dollar cars a month. Now, if you do that, that's ninety cars over a six month period. Remember, we're doing six months here. If you sell ninety cars at six grand per car, then that is five hundred and forty thousand dollars revenue in six months. Half a million dollars, guys. That's remember I was talking about. You want some big ticket items? Cars at six thousand a piece are big ticket items. If you're handling half a million dollars every six months, then if you've got good skills, then you're probably going to be very profitable in your business and be able to grow and be sustainable. So now let's think about what are the expenses at the auction. He would have not paid more than four thousand dollars for a car that was in his profit center. Four thousand dollars, the most they would pay. So they look at a lot of cars and buy the best ones they can for $4,000, knowing before they ever leave the auction lot that they're going to sell it for $6,000 or more because they've got expertise. Now, if they sell 90 cars at $4,000 apiece, that's $360,000 that went out, red ink. And when we subtract that red ink from the black ink, What's left? $180,000 margin. <laughs> That's right, $180,000 margin. Isn't that something? Now, you know what? If he keeps this going for a year, he or she, then they will sell over a million dollars worth of products a year. And they'll have uh, almost a half a million dollars margin to work with as business folks. That is that is how a business plan works. You look at what you're selling. Now, these are big ticket items, I know, but it shows you how the numbers can grow. So some of you now are looking at me, scratching your head, saying, Steve, all oh, that's well and good, but I'm not going to sell products. I don't have any products for sale. I'm not going to make anything. I've got a service to sell. I'm selling time for money like I'm doing. If you're a teacher, you're selling time for money. If you're a lawyer, you're selling time for money. If you're pressure washing, you're selling time for money. If you're painting, you're selling time for money. So there's a whole world of businesses, and a lot of you may be that, uh, that you're going to be in the business of selling time for money. I know that will be best best type work because she's going to be a, a counselor. And, and so it's important we spend a minute now talking about that. We need a business plan for time for money. And I want your business plan for time for money to be four days a week, four weeks a month, times six months is 96 work days in six months. Four days a week, four weeks a month, 96 work days. That's the basis of your plan is my suggestion to you. And I know it works. I've done it with hundreds of clients just like y'all that have come on board. And if you have a business plan that's, that's getting your expenses paid this way, you'll be able to manage it and grow it and, and add stuff uh, along the way. So you have to determine uh, how many appointments you can have per day and serve your customer. Like uh, uh, Beth as a registered nurse may not be able to schedule but four appointments a day. However, Patrice, if she is a, a cosmetologist and has a salon, she might be able to schedule 25 appointments per day. Uh, if Crystal is, is a, uh, a, a uh, designer, she might be able to do four appointments a day. So each one of us will have a different thing. Me, as someone that's giving seminars and webinars, I can give three webinars a day but only one seminar a day, usually because the seminars require travel time back and forth. For webinars, I might be able to give one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and one at night. So you see, every one of us will be able to be something different. But we're going to operate here as if this entrepreneur uh, can handle four appointments a day, and every how much money they can charge per appointment will be how much they'll generate per day. 
The same way, they don't have to, uh, in over uh, six months, say I have 96 appointments. The same thing we did before, we're going to figure out and estimate our cost uh, over 96 days, what our costs are going to be, and our total cost to see how this business model looks. We're going to subtract our uh, expenses from our estimated revenues to come up with what's left. And what are we going to call that? Margin. What are we going to call that, Lisa? Margin. Okay. And I see Shirley is joining us. Shirley, so glad to sit, have you on board. Thank you for coming in. Uh, I'd like to ask all of you, if you will, to go to your chat. Uh, we got some people that uh, call in on their phones, so we don't know what your name or your email address is. Please go to the chat and let us know your email address and your first and last name. That's how I can stay in touch with you uh, doing that. So back to selling time for money. Remember, four days a week, four weeks a month. This person says, I need $150 per appointment because what I want is $600 a day. And if I can fill up my appointment book with four appointments a day at $150 each, then I'll bring in $600 a day. If you, if you were going to say, I can have eight appointments a day at $75 a piece, you'll bring in $600. See the, see the way that's working? So we're going to do this one at, at $150 per. Okay. $600 times 96 is $57,600 coming in. My expenses are $200 a day, so it's $19,200 going out. That leaves us what? $38,400 margin, not profit, but margin. Here we go, $38,400 margin. Not bad, right? So you need to think about what your number of appointments will be, how much per you can do, and then you'll get an idea for what you can charge. So let's take this a next step. Let's say that you're going to have a business where you're going to be hiring other people to be on your team or on your crew, or you don't hire them to go out and do their thing, but they're working for you. You would do this same different type of plan for each one of your employees to see how much profit they can generate for your company. And that's the example of diversification and delegation, because maybe Maybe you just can't do it all yourself. All of us can't, but through diversification and delegation, we can use this same type of plan right here to make a lot of money and get people to help us do it. All right? So every plan will look different. Each one of us, uh, uh, Jen and Patrice and, and Rhonda, Denisha, your plan will be different than mine. But there will be a lot of similarities because we're going to take these different uh, uh, different looks, these different blocks, just like Lego blocks, and put them together to indeed make a business plan. Now, in the study, guys, that I sent to you, because everybody's going to be different, uh, some of you might be getting into the transportation business or have some other expenses that complicate things. So I wanted to send you one that was more complicated just for you to look at and study to help you get your own done. And as you get started on doing this, listen to me, as you get started on making your planner here, list down, as, go as far as you can using what I'm offering, but if you get hung up, if you get to a roadblock, just send me an email, send me a copy of what you're doing, and let's see if I can help you figure it out. I do it all the time, and I'm here for you. If you don't take advantage of it, whose fault is it? So, and everything we do will be confidential, okay? So let's take a look at, a, uh, at the, this is just a sheet out of the handout that I'm showing to you, where the, these people were doing a private transportation business. So not only did they have to figure out their time, but also they had the important factor of the expenses related to insurance and fuel costs and waiting time. Lots of factors come in. So I wanted to give you a, an example of things that you might have to consider in doing your plan. 
And again, each plan will take a different look. Uh, as you determine what your goals are, these numbers will be changing as well. So in this plan, we were looking at how many trips a day they would have to make to end up with X amount of money, uh, $50 per trip or 17 trips a day, uh, getting uh, $872. And it goes on and on. And, uh, and, and the handout shows you how to go about doing this. Back to the basic. Every expense model and every income model represent a block that will be going into your business plan. What is a business model? Well, in the dictionary, it could just be a plan. It could be things different companies do. But what we're going to do is we're going to keep it as simple as we can do it. Not complex, but as simple as we can make it. So if we see one of our business models not making enough money to be justifying itself, we're going to go back to that NDCP, no demand change to plan, and we'll see what we have to do to this plan to make it profitable in our business. We're not going to throw it away. If you like the idea and you think there's a good market for it, then the challenge for us as entrepreneurs is, is to figure out a way to make money with that idea. How long will it take to do it? Just as we went through this, uh, it probably took me about an hour to do that used car model. Now, I'll say to you that uh, real used car lots, and I've talked to several dealers before doing that, used car dealers would use that $6,000 bracket, and then they're going to say, but we also got a whole group of cars over here because some of our buyers can't afford six thousand, but we got we, we want to have something for everybody, so we've got another bracket of, of vehicles that we can sell for thirty five hundred dollars. When we go to the sale, we buy the, we buy them for fifteen hundred or two thousand and sell them for thirty five hundred. So they would have a business model for those lesser lesser costly cars, and in the same light. They're going to have some nicer, prettier, newer, later model cars that may be in the they, that may sell in the twelve thousand dollar range. Which in, on a car lot these days, twelve thousand dollars is a not a very expensive car when new ones are over fifty and sixty thousand. But they would have some models in the twelve to fifteen thousand that they would pay that they would pay around ten. In other words, they would or, or nine. In other words, as the values go up your margins need to go wider too because folks will want some financing, they want to negotiate, they'll be bringing in some trade-ins, so you're going to need more negotiating room in doing your pricing. We cannot have a pricing plan that is saying take it or leave it. That is a no, 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 no. We're not going to have one of Steve's entrepreneurs pricing their products as take it or leave it. Why? Because if that's your plan and that's what you're saying to your customers, take it or leave it, 80% or more will leave it. They'll go somewhere else and keep shopping, and you may never see them again. So I really want to encourage you and to teach you to, to build into your pricing plan negotiating room, discounting room. I don't want you to give any discounts that you didn't plan to give because at the end of the day, you've got to make some money to stay in business. So let's keep that in mind. Every model is going to be a little bit different. Now, this is an amazing slide. It's in your handout. Please, let's take a minute and look at it with me very, very seriously. <clears throat> Amelia, I hope you've got a good copy of this because it, it kind of brings it all together. And Crystal, I want you to really understand. First of thing I want you to notice that all the lines up top are black ink. Black ink, that represents money that's coming in. The lines down on the bottom are red ink, money going out. So we talked about all these different profit centers, right? And on your lines, and your line won't say marketable profit center to increase daily traffic. Your line might say uh, uh, jewelry, uh, dog food, 
uh, a certain brand, a certain type, a certain model car, a certain value car. Maybe maybe it would be thirty five hundred dollar automobiles. So whatever your models are, we'll plug every one of those in on the top in black ink, and that last line out there is going to represent what the margin was, what the projected income was. Understand? Because this is money coming in. Then we'll look at these and we'll add them all up and we'll have a good idea during the first six months how much money we're going to generate. That's exactly right. And you'll start seeing that, hey, you know what? I was thinking that I was only going to sell five of these items, but if I sell 20 of these items, I don't make some good money. <clears throat> then it's my job and your job to put together a marketing plan that will generate at least 20 sales for you. Can you do that? Let me tell you, yes. That old saying about you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink, nah. Because I can help you bring customers to your store, and you all, you're going to stick their head down in the water, and they're going to drink it. Because if they have come to you because they liked your marketing plan and you got a good pricing situation and you can negotiate with them and you can meet their needs, there's no reason that you're not going to sell unless you hadn't developed your selling skills. So the numbers are important, but the people are the ones that do the buying and selling. So I can teach you how to do the nerdy type stuff, the numbers game, count the beans, but we're also going to need to teach you how to sell and win people's confidence because folks don't do business with folks they don't like. And in this world of the Internet, they get to meet a lot of people. And how what's going to make people like you is, is the videos and your testimonials and the way you say things. So that's why it's important that you hang with us to the finish line and have the endurance to make your business work. In red ink over here on your slide, we're taking all the different ways we're going to spend money in our business and put it into a block. We don't have our utility costs. We don't have our phone costs. We don't have our internet costs. Each one of these will be a different line item, a different business expense model. That's right. We've got income models in black ink, expense models in red ink, and we put them together to come up with what's left. Because that what's left on this plan is going to be profit. That's right. And when we see what that profit is, we're going to have a good idea for what our taxes are going to cost us, how much debt we can pay back, how much money we can actually carry home or to save. And that's when we, that's when we get started. It's going to change all the time. You write business plans to change them because they're living and breathing all the time, different conditions. Remember I said, there's always a curveball coming at us, so sometimes we have to dodge and weave. That means we're going to change that business plan to, uh, to help us get along. Now, in your handout and here on the slides, we'll look at these. Uh, one of our, our clients, uh, uh, Ashley, made these uh, graphics for us. And you can take this on your paper, print it out, and start making notes all the way around these circles. Notice this business plan is going in a circle because that's what businesses do. You, you go in a circle like a wheel rolling, and you want to keep rolling. That's very, very important to do that. Now, if there's anything on this sheet that you just don't understand, uh, then turn your mic on and ask me what, you know, what something is if you want to. We'll talk about it. However, most of it is self-explanatory. Uh, some of these items will apply to your business and some won't, but you can take this on a lead pencil with an eraser and start making notes, and you know what? In just a little while, you'll be well on your way to putting a business plan together. You do this, and then you come back and you take your models. Now, let's look back here. Where are these models at? Right there. Profit center models over here in black ink. See that? And then all of these different expenses would be the different types of expense models that you might have. Different types of revenues.
You see, you may be, let's say that the business you're going to get started would be one that you're not going to make an actual profit on selling a, a, uh, a product. However, you may make a commission. Your, your income may be based on commissions, and if that's the case, we would put together a different type of business plan where we would say you need to sell a certain number of, of uh, properties uh, worth a certain amount to, to, to generate a certain amount of commissions. So it's all about looking at what your expenses are going to be and how much money and work you have to do to generate that. On the expense items, they just go on and on. Notice right here we don't have an expense item for marketing and advertising. The marketing budget will be bigger than the advertising budget. Because the marketing budget is everything we're going to do, our Internet exposure, our T-shirts, our billboards, where our advertising costs will be back related to the individual, back related to the individual product uh, 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 marketable profit centers. Because a lot of that money will be taken out before it ever hits the business plan. Professional fees, we can estimate lawyer, accountant, uh, internet providers, we can do a lot of estimating. I'll be glad to help you with that. If you're going to have a uh, franchise or a or, or a, uh, a Hardee's or something like that, uh, then you have to pay royalties. Uh, like if you have a franchise, you don't have to pay your franchise company a royalty on everything you take in. I want to caution you about doing any type of franchises right now. If that's on your mind, talk to me about it individually uh, because there's a lot of scammers out there in the franchise business that can really take advantage of you. But what we're after in our business plan is what's left. So let's start, let's talk, talk now about getting started. Let's name your business. Go ahead and be thinking about it. Maybe you don't officially have to do it, but if you want to share with me what you're thinking about naming your business or maybe give me three or four options, I'll, I'll be glad to give you my opinion on which one might work out best for you. Uh, now we're talking about the marketing plan. After next week, we're going to look at, let's get this marketing plan started. Let's th talk about what we're going to do during the first six months. Part of everything is what's your exposure on the Internet. And, yeah, maybe you've got a Facebook page here and you've done a little bit of this there and such as that. But do you really have an Internet marketing campaign? And that doesn't mean to, are you really spending millions of dollars or hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Do you have a structured plan that's designed to reach the particular audience that you need to talk to? That's the question that we want to answer. And maybe it's time to let's start talking to a webmaster, someone to help you build your website. A lot of, a lot of uh, clients that have been coming along here, uh, in these programs, we've got several, uh, maybe as many as six of, of our uh, members and associates of the academy here that will be glad to help you right now. Their rates are very low because we're just getting started. And then i got some that are really good pros, and they don't charge more, but they're going to move you to the, to the front page in a hurry. <clears throat> so... If you're going to a college class anywhere in the world, they're going to tell you that a business plan has seven essential sections. And I don't go through these uh, in a hurry uh, because uh, it's important you know that they exist, but it's not important that you, that you start using them right now if your business is brand new and going to be small. But let's talk about them just so you all know. First part of a, of, a, of, a, of a structured business plan is your executive summary. That is the appetizer. It's the first thing that people read, but it's the last thing that you write. Uh, take some time if you're interested in this. Uh, uh, read through it. A lot of information here for you. But what I do want you to do is let's get that business name. Let's think about what you want your domain name to be. Don't lock it in yet before we talk about it. Because a lot of people might have the business name being one thing, but the domain name needs to be something else so customers can find you. We'll talk a lot about that in next week and the week after. Maybe your income goal is $50,000 for your business for six months. 
What's left? $50,000. We will take a business plan and try to adjust it to, to meet the needs of your income goal. It's not the other way around that we take a business and just see what it'll do. Our objective as professionals is to have a target goal of income and then design and create a business plan with the different types of marketable business uh, profit centers that will generate the goal that you're after. That's right. That's a good thing. It's not, it's not rocket science, but it is a lot of good planning and thinking about it. So if you've got a number in mind, let that be what you're shooting for on what's left. And then if your business plan isn't getting there, it's an NDCP, <clears throat> then we're going to start making some changes. Now, if your what's left is $24,000, and during the first six months that you're wanting to generate that $24,000, you're planning on working 24 hours, then, hey, we, we got it. We already know that for every hour you're working, we need to generate a thousand bucks. Mm. And the math, I tell you a lot, it to bring it right down to where the rubber meets the asphalt, because the money has got to come. It has to be generated. And how do we do that? Uh, are we gonna play the game that if I build it, they will come? That's mighty risky. I don't like those risks. I'd rather have a good marketing plan and a good targeted audience and a really good idea based on experience, how much, how many customers we can probably bring in, how many items they probably will buy during the first six months, how much profit margin you'll have on each one of those items, and when we multiply it out, we'll have a good estimate of what our revenues are. And then we'll take it to the next step and start counting the beans to see what a good estimate of our expenses are. That's, that's what business planning is doing. Number two is your company descriptions. That's very simple. You just in a few sentences, you're going to describe what your business is going to be all about. Number three is talking about merchandising and selling time for money. A lot of good information here. Bottom line. We're after what's left, the black ink and the red ink. Let's keep it simple. Let's estimate all that we can, but be realistic. Let's get that second and third opinion to see if we're kind of in on the right groove. Uh, we don't figure out what it is so that we'll know what's left. Again, if the black ink, okay. But if it's red ink, we need to add more profit profitable centers. We need to add margins so we increase our sale prices or we need to reduce expenses or maybe we just need to go back and recalculate everything. That's what you do when you're doing your business planning. Now here's an example of someone that has come to me and said, Steve-O, I've got $305,000 I'll pay you to haul my products on your trucks. Next year, I've got $305,000 in income. So you may have a situation where you know about how much you can make but you, or you'll know how much money you can generate, but you don't know how much money it's going to cost you. See, these, uh, these business opportunities come in different ways. So here's an example that uh, the fellow told me he was going to pay me X amount of money over each, each period of time in the months how much per mile he was going to pay me. And so I was going to generate $305,000, which sounds great. Okay? But now I've got to go back and figure out what all my costs are. And when you have a situation like this, you can figure it out. Like in, in, in hauling, there's enough information out here and enough people you can talk to to put together a good uh, profit uh, model here to see what's left. Maybe your situation is, is different. Probably is. So let's talk about what it is, and we'll help you put together a model to get you there. Your one-time expenses can be just killers, and it may scare you from getting started. This is an example of someone that's going to buy a truck and a trailer and wants to know how much money it's going to cost them to get it on the road. 
Well, when you do your estimate of your startup expenses, that's $13,000 cash. I mean, this is off the hill before you drive one mile. Good estimates here. The only thing that may be inflated is this insurance cost. But if you've got bad credit and no history, the insurance company may make you pay all that up front. The better your credit is, the better your history is to list up front money they want, but it's going to come shortly. But what do you notice here in these startup costs? I don't have I don't have the truck or the trailer listed here. No. Because they would probably be financed and done separately and in a different place in our business plan than on the startup cost. But this is the kind of wrinkles that you get into when you're doing that. So going back to what we said a little earlier, notice here, each one of your blocks that have a line here. So you might take one of these and print it out and just start scribbling in here what your different type of profit centers are. Then you're going to come over here and estimate how much each one of them can make you in six months or a year. Write the number down. Then we don't come down here and look at our other expenses. Put a number in there. I know you're just estimating. And then you'll know what's left. When you have this coming up here, I know that it's estimates. But now's the time to share it with someone that's been there and done that to let you know that if your estimates are, are kind of in the real world, and if they're not, let's make some changes. Let's, let's try to bring them into reality. I love this. It's good. And and what, what I want you to know is that as you grow in your business, you're going to be doing this all the time because we're always going to be adding profit centers or taking something else because the world changes. Uh, services change, products change, models change. So we do this all the time in running our business. So this may all look like Greek to you at this point, but after three years in business, this will become second nature for you. It's just, just what we do as entrepreneurs. A market analysis, if you're borrowing big bucks and you're in a big million dollar market, market analysis are very important. But around the home here, around the community, just talk about uh, what's going on in your region with this particular product. Uh, who are the customers that are out there that you feel like you can get, uh, you can go to in a hurry and start doing business? We don't call that the low hanging fruit. We'll spend a lot of time in the next two weeks talking about them. Go ahead and make a list of all the competitors you know of that you have, or at least the ones that are most profitable or the ones that most people know about, because I don't ask you to study them a little later on. What are your strategies in getting started? Just summarize what your thoughts are. Don't tell too much. You don't need to let all your secrets out of the bag, or you need to spell it out in detail, but make sure you don't show it to anyone until it's been signed off on by maybe me or John because sometimes you can give your secrets away, which means you're going to hurt your chances to get started. <clears throat> what are your marketing tools? Well, here's a good place you're going to talk a lot about these seminars because and webinars because we're going to give you lots of marketing tools and how to do your promotions, uh, talk about what type of staffing that you might need, what their titles will be, your hours of operation. If you're going to have a business location, we need to talk a little bit about that. Uh, what size is it? How much is it going to cost you? About what's your estimated uh, rent? Again, be a little secretive here. You don't want to give the location away because uh, if, if it's going to be a while before you're ready to nail it down with the lease, uh, someone might try to steal that property away from you. I've got a handout I can share with you that's do's and don'ts before you sign a lease. That might save you a lot of headaches as well. Anytime you're moving into a business to renovate it, to start it up, I want to tell you it's going to be costly. And whatever it, you think it's going to cost you, you can probably double it because that's just the way things work. But I'll give you it right here is a good list of the things that you need to start thinking about with your initial cost. Who's going to help you? What's your management team? And this may not be people that's employees, but your management team might be me, as an advisor, it might be your banker, your accountant, a salesperson. It may be somebody you're, you're buying products from that's, that's giving you advice in, 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 on uh, how to sell it. Uh, make a list of your assets in management and people. 
You don't have someone to help you with some money, investors. You already know who they are, or you think that you need one investor with 10000 or maybe you need three investors with 10000 apiece, or one with 30000 Kind of make a list of what really might work best, kind of a think tank of what it's going to take to get there. Uh, part seven in a business plan is always going to be the financials. If you're brand new, people don't want to know your whole history from day one almost, uh, all about what you've been up to. If you've been in business, they're not wanting to see your financial records uh, back to five years. And let me just say to you now, if borrowing money is a part of the plan, they're not wanting to see five years of tax returns. So if you haven't been filing your taxes for whatever reason, you don't need to do that. At least three years of returns. Uh, even if you didn't need to file them, it will be good to go back and file those taxes so they'll be on record and you can show them to a lender because without them, you're not even going to get through the door. Here's a list of different things that you'd want to do. Uh, I can help you with details on that and we'll be glad to do it. And John will help you with that as well. John over at the uh, Small Business Center is a CPA. He knows accounting and he knows a uh, business book. So on those type of questions, he is indeed qualified to give you detailed information. So let's think about this today. Let's get started. What do you need to do to have self-confidence? And so many times, entrepreneurs come into these programs really want to do it, but hey, I just graduated from high school or just got out of college or I've been working jobs that hadn't really put me in a position to sell, to sell myself or to sell a product. That's life. So what what's lacking is that self-confidence to, to get out here and make the moves. Let me tell you, doing the mission and vision uh, plans will help you a lot with self-assurance. And when you start doing the videos, it's going to help you with your self-confidence so much, so much when you start doing those videos. And when you start learning the 40 drill skills, you will, on day one, you will start saying, hey, I get it now. I'm learning stuff that gives me the self-confidence to know that I've got stuff in my tool belt that I'll, I'll make some good decisions. For the last several years, I've had at least one or two people per class who just bragged on those, uh, those drill skills and it meant so much to them. Leadership is important. If you're going to be a leader and have employees or show other people how to do things, you need to start exercising your leadership skills. Organization skills, maybe you don't have a bit of it because you don't know how to organize, but you know what we did tonight? When you take this handout and you start outlining and, and drawing some graphs and putting it on paper or on your computer screens, you'll see that we started building an organization tonight for pretty much a company that's selling products and also a company that's going to be selling time for money. I've done all I can do for you and giving you helping you get started. You're going to have to take these and mold them to kind of suit what you're doing to do, and then I'll help you uh, uh, take it to the next step as well. I'm really enthused about seeing all of y'all, all 46 of you, uh, uh, out here thinking about moving your business to the next step. I know based on history, because I've do this, been doing it for 15 years now, lots of you are here just to kind of get a feel for it. Maybe you're not ready to jump in head first. Maybe you're not ready to change the priorities or have the time to do all this stuff. But because of the history, and just like you've seen with, your, with, with the other uh, entrepreneurs and associates that, that have come before you, it can happen. It can happen really neatly and in time, being careful, you're going to take very few risks. You have to take some. You take very few risks and have a chance to start building a business that maybe one day is worth a lot of money and you can sell it or it's bringing you in a lot of good money or it's, or it's giving you the security that you want. Or maybe it's just breaking even, but you are 100% successful because you're not after the big bucks. You've got some goals that you're trying to achieve, some people that you want to help, 
And if it breaks even, you're going to be just as happy as you can be because and just as successful as anyone else in the game. Meeting those personal goals is so important. Self-confidence, self-assurance, leadership, organization, all that makes a lot of difference for you. So you ready to get started? You ready to start doing some homework? Where's a good place to start? your mission statement, your vision statement, your promise statement. One, two, or three sentences per statement in your words that you're committing to is the ignition key for your business start. Because that is internal. That is something you're saying to yourself and willing to say, I am committing myself to do this to the world because we're going to use that. We're going to use those statements to show the world that you are committed, to show the world that you do have high standards, that you are going to treat them the way people ought to be treated. So I'll challenge you uh, right away. The first thing I'd like to see from you to send to me is what your mission and your vision and your promise statement is. And I know that it may be one statement today, but as you develop your thoughts and move forward with this, you may change it tomorrow, and that's fine. The key is, is that you're thinking in such a way that you're making a commitment to yourself and the world and the Academy of Associates and, and, and Entrepreneurs. You want to be a part of what's happening. Uh, that's my prayer. I'll pray for you tonight, and I'll pray for me too, for you and for your family and your business, because this is going to take some time you hadn't been given it before. But you know what? You're getting ready to start on a journey where you're going to meet a lot of nice folks. You're going to meet some people that have an interest in opening doors for you. You're going to have an interest in folks that see things in you that you hadn't seen before. And give yourself a chance, and things can really go really, really well. Now, we've moved along here quite well tonight. <clears throat> when you're believing and trusting in yourself, good things will happen for you. So let's just go ahead and get started. I want to uh, turn the uh, mics back on. And if you would like to, turn your cameras back on, and we'll chit-chat a moment and uh, see what next uh, might be on your mind. Uh, Beth, let me ask you, did you make it back home where you can talk to us now? I'm still sitting in the dance parking lot. It's where I go. <laughs> still sitting in the parking lot? Yep. Well, how's everything going? Is it all right? Yep, yep. Just keep on trucking one foot after the other. Well, I sure did enjoy uh, visiting your website and your Facebook pages and, and the way you've been presenting yourself. Uh, I'm, I'm sure things are going to go very well for you. Thank you. I've been doing, working in this industry for a number of years and just branching out into private practice. Fantastic. Well, let's make it happen. And we've got lots of lots of folks to meet and to work with. And Lisa, did, uh, did what what did you take away from tonight's presentation? Well, I've been taking a lot of notes on everything that you said. Um, I really do think it's going to be a matter of. Um, not being my own worst enemy and to keep going with what it is and to put it in order like you said um really figuring out the profit centers that's right that's right uh, and when, when we can do that and put and turn it into a this profit center has the potential to bring in x amount of revenue but it's also no cost us x amount of money but it's that what's left that's all important and when we start lining up all those what's left in our business plan, it'll start coming together for you. I do it every day in my business and have for a lot of years. So I, I, I know it's a plan that, that makes it easy to work for you. And I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Jen, are you still with us tonight? Yes, I am. All right. What's your takeaway from tonight? My takeaway is um, I just like how you have made it very systematic as far as the steps. I think uh, lots of times that can be very intimidating 
to um, not only know what the steps are, but um, as the buildup, if you will, um, after you complete one step, okay, what is next to do and what are the details, the intricate details in between um, those particular itemized um, descriptions that you gave. So unpacking all of that was very insightful for me, and um, it helps to, um, you know, make it more simplified. So in that regard, I feel um, like I'm more equipped to be able to move forward with right. having all that spelled out for me. Yeah, there's a lot there's a lot to take in, and I know that I cover a lot of ground in a hurry. Uh, I cut this program down so we would have a few minutes to talk, but uh, the real time uh, that we start into nuts and bolts, you just wait. When we get to week three, four, and five, <laughs> we're going to have a lot of stuff to add on here, which is very, very important. And and very exciting. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. And thanks for sharing your thoughts. You're very welcome, Steve. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. How about you, Crystal? You got something you'd like to add? Den <clears throat> Denisha, uh, are you still with us? Would you like to make a comment? Um, hello, I am still here. Um, I just want to say I, I enjoy these uh, these webinars. Um, I, I'm taking notes, as I heard one other person say, and, and just trying to absorb everything. Um, I'm in the very early stages of starting out, so um, I think more so now I'm just trying to learn what I need to do right. to, um, you know, at least get to the, the starting line because um, I feel like I'm – I'm close to it, but I'm not quite there. So I'm still learning and just absorbing all this great information and, and reading over the um, the information that's sent in the emails. You know, I understand 100%. And uh, sometimes we have to get things rearranged in our life uh, to, to before we can actually make these steps. And I've had some folks that have been uh, come to the seminars for six years uh, making notes. You know, they might not attend every seminar, but attend a lot of them. And then, and then one day I'll get an email from them and say, I am in business. And that is, that is just joyful for me to hear. So uh, one day, if that's what you're after, I, I think you can get there. And, and we're pulling for you. All of us are pulling for you. Uh, there's a lot of, a lot of team spirit that goes on in these uh, classes, and we, we think a lot about that. So, so best of luck to you, Shirley. Let me say hello to you. I, I uh, hadn't heard from you tonight. How are things going? <clears throat> Hi, Shirley. Are you still with us? She might be away from her phone or her pad. All right. Uh, uh, Jen Hunt in Fedville. Uh, What's your comments about this? She's left us as well. All right. Anybody got a, a closing comment? If not, we're going to turn you loose and wish you the very best. And let me tell you, I'm looking forward to getting those mission, vision, and promise statements coming on in from you. That will show me and show yourself that you're ready to do that. And, uh, and and Jennifer and Denisha, whether you got your business up and running or started or not, you can at least approach those statements and start getting your ideas together, and it will be very helpful for you. Yes, thank you for mentioning that, Steve. I did send you an email tonight for one business that I already have launched and then one I have in the making. So you'll Fant get that soon. Fantastic. I'll look forward to help promoting it for you, okay? Thank you so very much. All right. Well, good night, everybody. It's been a pleasure to work with you and for you. God bless you. Uh, remember, whatever it is, you can take it to Jesus in prayer and it'll get better. Uh, or take it to wherever you find your inspiration and and uh, and keep pushing. Uh, every day is a new day with new opportunities. Take care and good night. Good night. Thank you.